Welcome to the mathematics class of Mr. Larry Whittington. Stay tuned as Mr. Whit get on here today and speak to us about fractions. I hope you figure to understand what he gonna teach. Get your ink pen and your pencil out your calculator and get ready to learn something from Mr. Whittington, Fort Bend Tutoring. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Whit with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is gonna be about rational exponents. So let's dig right in with what you need to know first and foremost. And that is anytime you have a base, let's say it's the variable A here, that is raised to a fractional exponent. That's all a rational exponent is. It's just an exponent that's a fraction. That's it. So all the rules that apply to exponents will definitely apply to rational exponents. But in addition to that, these rational exponents also have the pleasure, the honor, to be able to be converted into a radical. Oh yes, these are special exponents, aren't they? Yeah, so for instance, if I have the base A raised to the M divided by N, you'll be able to convert this into a radical that has a root N with your base A raised to the Mth power. Yeah, it's practically magic. You know what I'm saying? So you also could write it in this form right here where you're taking the Nth root of your base and then raising that to the power of M. Therefore, this, this conversion, these conversions here, you want to be aware of those. Mm hmm. Yeah, you do. In addition to that, we could go on to say having a to the m over n is equivalent to a to the 1 over n raised to the nth power or a to the mth power raised to the 1 over n. Yeah. And we're going to assume that all the expressions in this entire video are defined. So therefore, if you see an expression where, for instance, we would end up maybe being able to take the square root of a negative number, that's not going to be the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our basis covered here. We're going to assume that all the expressions are defined, right? That we won't have any zeros in any denominators. We won't be taking the square roots of any negative values to get complex numbers. Okay, so do not fret. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, Mr. Witt and FBT. Yeah, we got you on this. We got you on this right here. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to turn the page now. We are definitely turning the page because we want to remind you of the exponential rules. Mm -hmm. The rules for exponents. We want to keep in mind those rules that if we're multiplying like bases, you're going to add the exponents. That if you have a monomial raised to a power, that the exponents within multiply. Mm -hmm. That if you have a quantity with several variables raised to a power, that it's the same as distributing that exponent to each of the individual variables, mm -hmm. knowing that it's a monomial in this case. All right. So this rule would not apply, for instance, if that was A plus B or A minus B. It had to be one term within the parentheses here. And it is. Okay. It is. Uh, continuing on, that when you have like bases, uh-huh, that when you're dividing like bases, like the variable A right here, you subtract the exponents. You got to subtract the exponents. And you can just really just go crazy with this and write it as this 1 over A to the N minus M because it's equivalent to one another. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get fancy, I mean, if you want to show off to your teacher that you know stuff, then you want to keep that one in mind. OK, you won't see that in any book. You know what I'm saying? You won't see this one just floating around out there. I had to research for that one. OK, so then then. Let's say you had a divided by b raised to the nth power. That is equivalent to a to the n divided by b to the n, where b cannot equal to zero. Because you can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. That would be undefined. All right? Why would you want to do that? And finally, if you have a negative exponent, okay? Negative exponents, you, you're going to write them as positive exponents. You're not going to leave any negative exponents in your answer, okay? You're just not going to do that because it's not, it's not proper. Okay, it's not what we do here as mathematicians. All right, so yeah, so these are the rules that we'll be implementing in this video. Let's check out number one. If you're wondering why I'm so happy, it's because I prepared a nice meal for you today in the form of these rational exponent problems. I really did. Yeah, I, I, I marinated it overnight and had the problems just reach their peak as far as you know the flavor is concerned the the the, the problems themselves the, the meat the flesh is so tender all right so anyway we are on 1a now they're asking us to convert 7 to the 1 half and we will be converting 
this exponential form into radical notation. Yeah, so we have our problem written in exponential form here. We have a base raised to an exponent. What you should know is that the denominator of your fraction is the index of the radical. Mm -hmm. It's the root. Yeah, in fact, you can just go so far as to say the denominator of your fractional exponent is the driving force of the problem. That's what you should know. That's what you're going to keep in mind, okay? Because you're going to master this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to make sure of that. You're going to be the master of rational exponents. And you're going to keep in mind that the denominator of a fractional exponent is the driving force. It is the engine of the problem. Mm -hmm. It is. It's telling you what you can do and how you can get there. All right? It's on star for the problem. The two in the denominator, it means that that is the index. That is the root of the problem. So I'll end up with the square root, okay? Knowing that when I write the radical symbol, that if I don't show my index, that we assume it is two because it is. And we could say that this is just seven to the first power here. Yeah, that's it. This is the conversion of seven to the one half. It's the square root of seven. Yeah, this is the answer. And what we're going to do when we have an answer, we're going to red box it. Okay. We're going to put a red box around our answer mm -hmm. for protection. Red boxing it. There you go. There's the answer. Yeah. See, if I wanted to show you where these values went, see, the index is two. Yeah, that's where it was hiding. And then the exponent on our base is one. 7 to the first power. See, that 7 is being raised to the 1 half power. Mm -hmm. But as far as submitting your answer, you'll do it exactly as I showed you. You'll simply have it as the square root of 7. That's it. Because mm -hmm. it must be simplified. It has to be simplified. So therefore, there you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. That was 1A. We're moving on. We're moving on to 1B now. And for 1b, we have the variable a raised to the two-fifths power. And as far as your variables are concerned throughout the video, for instance, this variable a, you need to know that your variable a in this situation is non-negative. All right? It will not be a negative value in order to avoid undefined situations. Therefore, the domain of every variable within this video will be greater than or equal to zero. Just letting you know. So let's convert a to the two-fifths power into radical notation. It's going to look just like this. My index here, the driving force of our problem is the denominator of the fractional exponent. And that means that the index is five. I'm trying to take the fifth root of something. So one way to write this is to have the fifth root of a squared. Mm -hmm. I could write it just like that. Yes, the five is ugly and it looks incomplete, but that's a five. All right, there you go. It's going to be the fifth root of a squared. That's one way to write the answer. Another way to write this answer is to say that we have the fifth root of a all being raised to the second power. Mm -hmm. That we have the fifth root of a squared. So both of these solutions here are equivalent to one another. Therefore, they're both equally the answer. What you'll need to do is determine whether your teacher has a preference, your author of a textbook may have a preference, or you yourself may prefer one way over the other. If you want to know my opinion about this, I like the first way. It looks cuter to me. This messy extra writing, I'm lazy, I'm not trying to write all these extra symbols, you know what I'm saying? So therefore, red boxing it. Yeah, and this extra one over here too, because both of these are the solutions to problem 1B. It's good, either way. It's up to you. You do what you like. All right, so here we have 1C now. And in 1C, we have 6 to the 3 halves power. Well, the driving force of this problem mm -hmm, is the denominator of the fractional exponent. Yeah, it's 2. Okay, that means that we're trying to take the square root of things here. So knowing that, I could show that this is the square root of 6 cubed. Mm -hmm. That would be a conversion of our exponential form here. Yeah, it's equivalent to that. Um, we could also say that we have the square root of 6 cubed. Yeah, we could say that as well. And that would be the end of our conversion. Now, mind you, you can simplify both of these problems. And I'll give you examples of those type of problems later in the video. But what you need to know is that these are not simplified. However, these are 
the answers to the problem because it just simply asked you to convert it. Now, if they would have said convert and simplify, that's a different story. Yeah, so red box it. Red box in it. Yeah, both versions of the answer because they're both correct. They're both equally the answer. Next, the next thing that I have for you, I told you I got plenty of goodness for you today. There are treats to be had. Mm -hmm. 1D, we have 2 to the 3 fourths power. 2 to the 3 fourths power. Therefore, the index of the radical is what? Very good. It's 4. We're taking the fourth root. So we're able to rewrite this as the fourth root of 2 cubed. But you know that 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, right? So that means that we could say that this is the fourth root of eight. Yeah. We can say that's the fourth root of eight. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put a red box around this. this is the right answer. This is clearly the um, the right answer here. There you go. That's that's one way to, to solve that problem. Yeah, it, it is. Oh, you want to see the other way? Well, let me show you. So let's say that you wrote this as the fourth root of two cubed. Well, if you wrote it that way, then there's, you're kind of stuck there, right? I mean, because you can't take the fourth root of two, right? Like I said, the second way is just, uh, it's just, it's too many issues with it. This is the correct answer, convert it. I mean, in that form, I like my way better because it looks cleaner. Yeah. All right. So uh, there you go. There you go with that one. Uh, let's look at 1E. With 1E, just in converting the problem, all right? We'll have the cube root, because our index is 3. We know that because of the denominator of the fractional exponent. We'll end up with 4 to the 4th power. Mm-hmm. That's one way to convert it. Okay. That's correct. There you go. Or you could say that you have the cube root of 4 raised to the 4th power. That would also be a true statement. Okay. You could do that. You could do that. And these would be the correct answer here. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Let's say that you have 1F with B to the negative 1 half power. Well, the first thing you should be concerned about is the fact that you have a negative exponent. And we don't want negative exponents in our answer now, do we? Mm -mm. All right, so we'll go ahead and rewrite this as 1 over B to the 1 half power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but being as though they requested radical notation, that means that I can show that this denominator here, this b to the one-half power, can be written as the square root of b. So I have one divided by the square root of b. But if you've ever dealt with radicals and square roots, then you know you don't leave a radical in the denominator. You don't leave it in there. It's ugly down there. So you want to rationalize the denominator. OK, if you need a refresher on rationalizing the denominator, check out this video here on rationalizing the denominator. OK, when you're dealing with radicals, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of B. Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. All right. So therefore, multiplying straight across here, I have one times the square root of B. That's going to be the square root of B. This is going to be divided by the square root of b times the square root of b, which is the square root of b squared. And the square root of b squared is b. And we know this, and we don't have any issues with this, because I've already explained to you that every expression that we'll be dealing with will be defined. So therefore, you can assume that b cannot be zero, or negative for that matter. So this is our answer right here. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. Okay, I hear you in my head right now, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and write down the condition so you'll have it. We're going to say that B must be greater than zero. Our variable B must be greater than zero because if it's zero, it'll be a zero in the denominator. That'll be undefined. We can't have that. In addition to that, it can be a negative value because you can't take the square root of a negative number. Therefore, our domain for the variable B, it has to be positive. It has to be a positive number, all right? Feeling better now? There you have it. That's one F, ladies and gentlemen, and teachers, because I know you're watching teachers. You're just waiting on me to mess up, aren't you? But I'm not. Next problem. In our next problem here, we'll be doing the reverse. We'll be converting radical notation into exponential notation. 
and we're going to have fun doing it. Recall that anytime you just see your radical sign, the radical sign itself, the index is two. If you don't have another index there, you can assume the index is two. So this is the square root of 10 raised to the third power. Well, if I'm going to write that in exponential notation, and I'm not afraid to, I'll have a base of 10 raised to the three halves power. That's right. Recall that the exponent on the outside of the parentheses goes in the numerator, whereas your index goes in the denominator. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. There it is. That's the answer to 2A. Oh, I'm having too much fun. Way too much fun. 2B. We have the cube root of x squared. Here we go. We have our variable, the base x. It'll be raised to the two-thirds power. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's over. See, the uh, power on your base goes in the numerator, whereas your index, the root, it goes in the denominator. I'm red boxing this, and you can't stop me. Mm -mm. Get out of my way. Next. I'm just having too much fun today. Too much fun with you. We have problem 2C. This is the sixth root of 2. What's the exponent on my base of 2? Hmm? What's the exponent? What did you say? Yes, you're correct. 2 is currently to the first power. And the radicand? Yeah, it's currently to the first power. And if I were to convert this into exponential notation, then I will have my base 2 raised to the 1 sixth power. That's right. 2 to the 1 sixth. It's done. Put a box around it. You better be putting boxes around your answers because if you don't, I will find you. I have my ways. I have my ways. In problem 2D, we have the quantity of 6V raised to the 1 in 5 tenths power. All right. Now, I know all along we have been talking about rewriting things in exponential notation. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But I'm going to do two things in problem 2D. Not only am I going to write this as a fractional exponent, I'm going to also convert it into radical notation. All right. So I'm going to give you a little twofer on this one. If we were to rewrite this in fractional notation, I can show that this is the quantity 6V raised to the 15 tenths. Right. Because of the tenths place, we can place the 15 over 10. Right. I can simplify this to show that this is the quantity 6V raised to the 3 halves power. See, this is after I'm dividing the 15 and the 10 by 5, right? You know how to simplify fractions, don't you? So reduce your fraction, the 15 tenths, divide both the 15 and the 10 by 5. You'll get 3 halves. This is my answer written with a fractional exponent. So that's technically answering the question. All right, so let's go ahead and put a red box around that. Red box in it. However, we're also going to change this into a radical, all right? We're just going to add on a piece to this. We're going to show off. We're going to go ahead and say that we know that in radical notation that this quantity here could be written as the square root of 6v cubed. Mm -hmm. You can show it that way, or, 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 you can show that you have the square root of 6v cubed. Mm -hmm. You can show it that way. So I just wanted to go ahead and let you know, because the question was a little funky, because it was already in exponential form, but it wasn't written as a fractional exponent, I want to go ahead and give you a little extra for 2D. So there you go. You got a little icing on the cake for this one for free. OK, so there you go. So not only did we write our quantity in exponential notation with a rational exponent, but we also showed its conversion in radical notation. I'm in a giving mood today. All right. I'm in a giving charitable, charitable mood today because I love you. OK, I, I love you. All right. And if you haven't heard it today, you're hearing it from Mr. Witt. I love you. All right. <laughs> Take that to the bank. Now, let's move on. Just when you thought we were already having fun, let's really explode in the fun area mm -hmm. with simplification. We're going to be simplifying 3A. And in 3A, we have 8 to the 2 thirds power. Now, there are many ways to approach this problem, but I'm going to show you the way I like to do it. All right. I'm going to give you the best of me right now. That's what I'm going to do. And I have 8 to the 2 thirds power. And I told you that the driving force of this problem is the denominator of the fractional exponent. In this case, the 3 is letting me know that I'm looking for perfect cubes. Yeah, I am. And it just so happens that 8 is a perfect cube. I'm going to show that. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you that the 8 can be rewritten as 2 to the 3rd power. That's being raised to the 2 thirds power. And based on our exponential rules, we know that when we have a monomial raised to a power, raised to another power itself, that these exponents will multiply. And in multiplying 3 times 2 thirds, in multiplying 3 times 2 thirds, my 3s will cancel out. And I end up with 2 squared here. Are you feeling what I'm giving you? 2 squared is equivalent to 4. That's the answer. Yeah. Now, you could have taken the radical notation route of doing that and by all means have at it. But since this video is on fractional exponents, on rational exponents, I'm going to show you how to tackle the problem using rational exponents here. There you go. The answer is four. Red box it. Red boxing it. I am moving on to 3B. Here I have 36 raised to the 3 halves power. The driving force of the problem is the denominator of the fractional exponent, of the rational exponent. It's 2. They're telling me they're looking for perfect squares. It just so happens that 36 is a perfect square. Let's go ahead and show them. I'm showing my teacher that 36 is 6 squared. It's raised to the 3 halves power. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my 2's. I end up with 6 cubed here. I'm going to show off, and I know that 6 to the third power is 216. You can't stop me. You cannot stop me. I'm dangerous today. I'm on fire. Mm -hmm. I am a flame in the night. 216. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. I love these problems. Can you tell? Let's move on. We have problem 3C. Not only do we have a negative base that we should be keeping in mind, our base is negative 8. It is also being raised to the negative 5 thirds power. Now, here's what I can do. The denominator of our rational exponent tells us what they're looking for. They're looking for perfect cubes. How do I know that? The index is 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're trying to take the cube root of something. So, since the index is 3, I hope to be able to rewrite this negative 8 to show that it's a perfect cube. Because if it is, I can simplify this quickly, and that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to spend too much time on a problem, you know? So I'm going to rewrite this expression as the quantity of negative 2 cubed raised to the negative 5 thirds power. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By doing this, the exponents will multiply, canceling out the 3s. The 3s are gone now. They're gone. So I have a base of negative 2 that's being raised to the negative 5th power. All right. Now, because my exponent is negative, I'll go ahead and shift the base to the denominator in order to end up with a positive exponent. Yeah. But because this value is something that I can reasonably evaluate on my own, the negative 2 raised to the fifth power is just going to be a negative 32 in the denominator. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Yeah. is negative 32. Thus, my solution is negative 30 seconds. That's it. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. Yeah, that's problem 3C. Let's continue. 3D. Right? There you go. 3D. We have the quantity 9 fourths being raised to the 3 halves power. We already know the driving force of this problem is that denominator of 2. Mm -hmm. And the fractional exponent, we know we're looking for perfect squares. I think I'm going to go ahead, even though I can do this different ways, I think I'm just going to go ahead and show that 9 is a perfect square because it's 3 squared, 4 is 2 squared, and it's all being raised to the 3 halves power. Yeah, I'm going to go with this method, okay? From here, from here, okay, thank you. All the exponents within my parentheses will be multiplied by 3 halves. See, 2 times 3 halves, the 2's will cancel out. Leave me with 3 as an exponent. Mm -hmm. Multiplying the exponent of 2 on my base 2 times 3 halves, once again, the 2's will cancel out and leave you with 3. So this is equivalent to 3 cubed divided by 2 cubed. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't believe me on the multiplication? See, I have 2 times 3 halves. This is equivalent to 2 over 1 times 3 over 2. I can simplify before I multiply to get 3 over 1, which is just 3. See, that's where my exponent 3 is coming from in this problem. Don't test me. Don't test me. I see you. I saw what you were trying to do. You were trying to see if I was going to mess up. No, 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 no. 
this is 3 cubed divided by 2 cubed. And now to evaluate this, because 3 cubed means 3 times 3 times 3. Oh, it is 27. You will write down 27 right now. Then the 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. And we know this value is 8. I'm red boxing this. Red boxing it. Mm-hmm. That's 3D. And we're moving on to our next problem. With or without you, 3C is about to be done. With the quantity 9 n to the fourth power being raised to the one-half power, our driving force here, the engine, is the index. And our index is 2. They're looking for perfect squares. All right? Keeping in mind that our variables are non-negative, that makes this much more stress-free as far as our approach because we don't have to worry about complex numbers here, all right? So what I will show you is this. I'm gonna show that the base nine can be written as three squared. Mm -hmm. Since our exponent is a multiple of two, as far as that n to the fourth power is concerned, I'm gonna leave it be, I'm gonna leave it be. And then the next thing you should know is that since we have a monomial within our parentheses, meaning one term, all the exponents within will be multiplied times the one half on the exterior of the parentheses. That's right, the exponents will be multiplied here. So rewriting this, I have three to the two times one half. What's half of two? It's one, right? So this is just three to the first power. If I have half of four, four divided by two is two, therefore this is just n squared. To simplify this, you'll have three n squared as your answer. That's it. This is the result here. I'm red boxing this. Red boxing it. That's 3E, all right, 3E. If I said 3C earlier, forgive me, this is 3E. This is 3E, this is so 3E right now, okay? That was 3E, not, not 3C if I said that, because I think I might have made a mistake and said 3C earlier, but no, this is 3E as an elephant, all right? Or as an exponent, you see what I did there? See what I did there, how I tied it into the math. All right, E as an exponent. All right, watch your mouth now. All right, so we have 3F. We have 4 to the 6 fourths power. Now, as always, when you're dealing with fractions, whether it's a fractional exponent or any other type of fraction, you want to deal with it in this simplified form. Simplifying 6 fourths, you'll end up with 4 to the 3 halves power. From this point, you should notice that our driving force of the problem is our denominator of the fractional exponent. In other words, it's 2. We're looking for perfect squares, and we happen to have one. 4, our base 4, is a perfect square. I can show this by rewriting it as 2 squared raised to the 3 halves power. And when these exponents are multiplied, the 2's will cancel out. That leaves me with 2 to the 3rd power. 2 to the 3rd power, what is that? What's that value? What's 2 times 2 times 2? Exactly. It's 8. Red box it. Red boxing it. That's it. That's the answer. That is 3F. Let's move on. Oh, yes. 3G is in the house. We have 16 to the negative 1 and 5 tenths power. We're using fractional exponents within this video. So I'm going to convert the negative 1 and 5 tenths into fractional notation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 16 to the negative 3 halves power. I can also show that since our driving force of the problem is 2, we're looking for perfect squares here. Our index is 2. We can show that 16 is a perfect square. I can rewrite this as 4 squared raised to the negative 3 halves power. You see where I'm going with this? Continuing on. The twos will cancel out here. They're gone. You end up with four to the negative third power. But because we have a negative exponent, you're not going to leave it like that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, you're not. You're going to shift our base of four to the denominator. Mm -hmm. It'll be under one. You'll have one over four cubed. And it just so happens, I know what four cubed is. Four times four is 16. And 16 times that additional four is 64. I'm red boxing this. This is the answer. 164th. And done. Are you not having fun with this? Because I am having fun for both of us and your entire crew. Because I see him out there. I see you with your crew. <laughs> you ain't fooling me. You are not You are not fooling me. I see who you're with. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell your mama. We're going to move on. Here I have problem four. Problem four asks us to simplify. 
we have the square root of 3 raised to the 6th power. Let's go ahead and see if we can do something with this. Our base, 3, can be said to be raised to the 6 halves power. Yeah, it just so happens that 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we knew that already. So we have 3 cubed. Well, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. The answer is 27. Red box in it. Red box in it. We're just using our exponential rules. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Having too much fun. We have the ninth root of x to the sixth power. Let's rewrite this as x to the six ninths. Okay. From here, from here, we'll go ahead and reduce the six ninths to x to the two thirds. Now, usually in mathematics, the way they want you to give back the answer is the way they gave it to you. So since we started in radical notation, we'll go ahead and rewrite it as a radical. All right. However, keep in mind, some textbooks and teachers will take the x to the two thirds as a result. You just don't know. You got to get a feeling for these things. All right. Best way is to ask. So if a teacher gives you a problem like this, you want to make sure that they're clear about how they want their answer written. If it's not in the directions and they ask you to simplify, you want to make certain that you have to write the answer either in exponential notation or radical notation. So don't be afraid to ask, even if it's in the middle of a quiz or a test or even in front of your friends. Because you got to get the right answer. You got to get the right answer. So, according to some, this answer could be x to the two thirds power. Okay? It could be because it's simplified. Or they may want to see this written as the cube root of x squared or the cube root of x squared. So, depending on the directions and your teacher, or your text, any of these three results could be the answer because they're all simplified. All right? Red box it. Red boxing them. All of them because they could all be the answer. Yeah. They could all be the answer. It all depends. Let's move on. Next up, we have problem 4C. All right? With 4C, we have the square root of 5 raised to the negative 2 power. Well, Let's go ahead and show that this 5 is raised to the 1 half power, and it's being raised to the negative 2 power. Okay? Yeah. From here, or here, thank you, we can multiply the exponents now to end up with 5 to the negative first power. And you know we're not going to leave a negative exponent in our result. You know this, man or woman. Therefore, you'll end up with one-fifth. And that's it. Red box it. Red boxing it. There you go. You got to put the answer in the red box. What can I say? All right? It just makes things clear. All right? Be clear. Be straightforward. Be blunt with the truth. And the truth is, the answer is one-fifth. And that's problem 4C. Yes, we're moving on up like George and Wheezy. Hello, old people that got that joke. Hey, this means to simplify. Simplification will now commence. We have 5a. 5a is a multiplication problem. They want us to find the product of 3 to the 1 half times 3 to the 3 halves. What you should keep in mind is that we're multiplying the exact same base, this base of 3 here. And because we're multiplying like bases, you should be adding the exponents. Yes, you should be adding the exponents in this problem, and that's exactly what we'll show. We'll show that this is equivalent to 3 to the 1 half plus 3 halves. Mm -hmm. Simplifying this, this gives us 3 to the 4 halves. Simplifying our rational exponent, this is 3 squared, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 3 squared, oh my god, is 9. Red box it. Red boxing it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can't deny that that was fun. You, you can't deny that. Let's move on. This is 5b. Yeah, this is, this is 5b. I can show that this x is to the first power, because it is, and we're multiplying times x to the 2 ninths power. We know, multiplying like bases, you're supposed to add the exponents. Therefore, this is equivalent to x to the 1 plus 2 ninths. Yeah. 
or I can show that this one could be rewritten as nine ninths since I have to add these numbers together and that gives me a result of X to the 11 ninths power. Mm -hmm. And this is my answer. We started in exponential notation. We ended in exponential notation. How you like that? Red box it. Red boxing it. That was 5B. Carry on. In problem 5C, we have 2 to the 1 3rd power times 4 to the 1 3rd power. Hmm. Well, I know that if I were to multiply like bases, all I would have to do is add them, but currently I don't have like bases. However, I do know that 4 can be rewritten as 2 squared. Let's do that. I'll end up rewriting this as 2 to the 1 3rd power times the quantity of 2 squared raised to the 1 3rd power. Oh, yes. Now I have 2 to the 1 3rd power times 2 to the 2 thirds power. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. See that 2 as the exponent, that the exponent 2? I, I, I put that over 1. Then I multiply 2 over 1 times 1 third to get 2 thirds. Magnificent. Magnificent. Multiplying like bases, you're going to add the exponents together. Okay, so I am literally going to add the one third and the two thirds together to give me two to the three thirds, which is two to the first power, which is two. Red box it. What you going to do when those exponents come for you? You better kill them. You better kill them. That's right. And that's what we're doing right now. Killing these problems. Killing these problems. Dead. Dead. Mm -hmm. They have to die. All of them. See, with 5D, I have 6 to the 5 fourths power divided by 6 to the 1 fourth power. When you're dividing like bases, we subtract the exponents. Therefore, we can rewrite this as 6 to the 5 fourths minus 1 fourth. Well, what is that? That's equivalent to 6 to the four fourths. Well, what's that? That's equivalent to six to the first power. Well, what's that? That's just six. Red box it. You better red box that. There you go. I don't know what this little extra handle is right there. Let's get rid of this handle. I don't know why there's a handle there. There's my box. You gonna let boxes with handles come in here? Next problem. 5G as in goat. Mm-hmm. Just in case you were wondering. We have 3b to the 1 half power times 2b. Let's multiply this. I like to compartmentalize my process, ladies and gents, by multiplying the coefficients first. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? As far as multiplying the like bases of b are concerned, however, we're supposed to add the exponents, aren't we? Well, this b here, the b right here, that's, that's to the first power. So I'll have b to the one-half plus one. Well, that's equivalent to 6b to the one-half plus two-halves, right? So this gives me 6b to the three-halves, which is the answer. Red box it. Red boxing it. That was 5g. Having fun with rational exponents. We have 7 to the 1 3rd power divided by 7 to the 4 thirds power as promised. You need to subtract the exponents when you're dividing like bases. You should know that the base that has the largest exponent is where the base will remain. So all you have to do is know that this is just going to be 1 over 7 to the 3 thirds power because you subtract the exponents and the base remains wherever the largest exponent is. And then simplifying 3 thirds, that's equivalent to 1 over 7 to the first power, which is 1 7th, which is the answer. Red box in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Now, you could have done the following. I already know. You could have said that this was 7 to the 1 3rd minus 4 thirds. You could have done that. You could have then said that this is 7 to the negative 3 thirds. You could have then said that this is 7 to the negative first power. And then you could have had your answer of 1 7th. I know you could have done that. But I like my method better. All right. But as long as you're getting the correct answer, I'm pleased with you. All right? Today. Carry on. 5F. We have 4X squared divided by 2X to the 1 half power. 
I know we can simplify 4 divided by 2. Well, 2 will go into 4 twice, right? Okay, don't know where that red came from. 2 x to the 2 minus 1 half. All right, so subtracting these exponents, you'll have x to the 4 halves minus 1 half. This gives me 2x to the 3 halves power. Mm -hmm. And this is my answer. I'm red boxing it. Red boxing it. Yep. That's it. Let's move on. Problem number 6, A. We have the cube root of x squared times the square root of x. We're asked to simplify this. This is a video on rational exponents. We'll be using rational exponents to solve this problem. I'm going to rewrite these as x to the two-thirds power times x to the one-half power. And normally we would just add the exponents because we're multiplying like bases. However, we have different denominators. So I'm going to need to rewrite this uh, with common denominators. I'm going to write it with a common denominator of 6. So this becomes 4, 6 times x to the 3, 6 power. Okay, from here, adding these exponents, you'll have x to the 7, 6 power. Now, this is your answer simplified. However, if you are to submit your answer back in the original form we started out with, meaning radical notation, we would say that we have the 6 root of x to the 7th power. Simplifying this further, though, you would end up with x times the 6 root of x. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you would end up with. Therefore, either x to the 7th, 6th power, or x times the 6th root of x is your solution for 6a. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, let's carry on with problem 6b. 6b, we have the square root of 5 times the cube root of 5. Rewriting this in exponential notation, we'll have 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 1 third. Once again, we have different denominators here, so when we're trying to add the exponents because we're finding the product of like basis, we'll rewrite this as 5 to the 3 6 times 5 to the 2 6. All right? Then, adding these exponents, you'll have 5 to the 5 6 power, and this is your answer in exponential form, or you could write this as the 6 root of 5 to the 5th power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. Or find out what 5 to the 5th power is, which I think is 3,125. Yeah, it is 3,125. How did I know that? That's crazy. All right, so there you go. I'm red boxing it. Red boxing it. Mm-hmm. And it all depends on what your teacher prefers. So ask to find out. All right. There you go. That's 6B. Yep. Next problem. With 6C, we have the fourth root of 3 times the fourth root of 27. And I will be rewriting this in exponential form. So therefore, we have 3 to the 1 fourth power times 27 to the 1 fourth power. Well, that's cute especially with the fact that I know that 27 can be rewritten with a common base of 3. So I'll now have 3 to the 1 fourth times 3 cubed raised to the 1 fourth power to give me 3 to the 1 fourth times 3 to the 3 fourths. Mm -hmm. And now adding the exponents on those bases of 3, we'll have 3 to the 4 fourths power which is 3 to the first power, which is 3. How cute are you? Put a red box around that. Go ahead and put a red box around that. Yeah, that was fun. 6D. Rewriting this in exponential notation, I have 2 to the 1 third times 3 to the 1 half power. Now, these are different bases, so you can't add the exponents. But what we can do is we can get a common denominator. Oh, yeah. Let's see what happens. If you get a common denominator for 3 and 2, that'll be 6, right? So this will become 2 to the 2 6 power times 3 to the 3 6 power, right? Okay. Well, because your denominators are the same here, that means that you're dealing with the same root, the 6 root. So this is the 6 root of 2 squared times 3 cubed, like so. Well, this gives us 
the sixth root of four times 27. Well, multiplying that out, you'll end up with the sixth root of 108. Yeah, the sixth root of 108. That's the answer. There it is. That was 16. Red box it. Red boxing it. That was a good problem. I like that problem. That was good. In 7a, we're asked to simplify. Once again, the driving force of this problem is the 4. You see that? Not only that, you should know that because we have a monomial, all the exponents within will be multiplied together. And I'm going to help myself out by rewriting this 16 as 2 to the 4th power. Mm -hmm. It's going to simplify with that 3 fourths that much easier. Yeah. I'm aware that that 4 is ugly. Okay. So why are you saying to yourself, man, that's an ugly four? I know it is. I'm not going to do nothing to it, though. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Uh-huh. Now, multiplying the exponents, we have four times three-fourths. That gives us two to the third power. This becomes, because two and four reduce to one-half times that three, this gives us x to the three-halves power. Thank you. Y is going to be to the negative one-fourth power, because the threes would cancel out there. So we have a few things to do. For one, we need to get rid of this negative exponent, and we need to also evaluate 2 to the third power. We know that 2 to the third power is 8. So I'll have 8x to the 3 halves power divided by y to the 1 fourth. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on your teacher, this may or may not be okay. Mm -hmm. because we end up with a rational exponent in the denominator. Some teachers may not want you to stop right there, because think about it. It's like having the fourth root of y in the denominator. All right, they may not care for that that much. So what you could do is, if they won't accept this as the answer, you can rationalize this by ensuring that your exponent in the denominator is an integer. All right? And that means we'll be multiplying the numerator and the denominator by three-fourths to ensure that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just like this. And the result of this, you may ask, is going to be 8x to the 3 halves power, y to the 3 fourths power, divided by y. You'll end up with just y to the first power in the denominator. Okay? Yeah. So either one of these versions is correct. Ask your teacher which one they prefer. All right, red boxing it. Either this version right here, or they may want you to go so far as to do that to ensure that you don't have any radicals or rational exponents in the denominator. All right? For 7b, we're going to simplify this. I'll begin by recognizing that my index on that exponent on the outside of the parentheses is 3. We're looking for perfect cubes here. So I'm going to show that 27 is 3 cubed. And since my exponent on p is a multiple of the denominator, my rational exponent's denominator. I'll leave it the way it is. So it's raised to the 5 thirds power. From here, we'll be simplifying this. And so my threes will cancel out when I multiply three times 5 thirds to leave me with three to the fifth power. And then three goes into six twice and two times five is 10. So that's P to the 10th power. And three to the fifth power is 243. Huh. All right, go ahead, Mr. Witt. And there you go. That's the answer. Done. I'm red boxing it. Red boxing it. That's 7B, baby. All right. Move on to the next problem. Moving on to 7C. That's right. With 7C, we have 81x squared. Well, it's currently raised to the power of 1 and 25 hundredths. Yeah. We're going to change this into a fractional exponent. So this is going to be the quantity 81x squared raised to the 5 fourths power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can start off by placing 125 over 100 and then simplify by 25. Mm-hmm. 5 fourths. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to show, because my driving force is the index, that 81 could be written as 3 to the fourth power times x squared. That's being raised to the 5 fourths power. From here, we'll simplify this by multiplying the exponents to get 3 to the 5th power and x to the 5 halves power. Yeah, just like that. From here, this gives me 243 x to the 5 halves power. And this is my answer. Red boxing it. Red boxing it. Yeah, that's it. Continuing on. 
Next up, we have 17. We have p to the 3 halves raised to the negative 2 power. Well, I know that those 2's are going to cancel out by 2's. And I end up with p to the negative 3rd power. But you got a negative exponent. Got to get rid of it. So this gives me 1 over p cubed red box in it. Red box in it. That's it. I like problems like 70. Nice, simple, and quick. Mm -hmm. 70. With 70, we have a to the 1 half power raised to the 3 halves power. The exponents will be multiplied together. This gives us a to the 3 fourths power. It's over. It's over. I know you were expecting more, but it's done. No, 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 no. Calm down. You're, you're, it's okay. It's over now. I'm going to put a red box around this. Red boxing it. See? It's in the red box. And you're safe. 7F. With 7F, we have 25b to the 6th power raised to the negative 1 and 5 tenths. This is not going to stand as it is. I'm going to rewrite this as 25b to the 6th power raised to the negative 3 halves power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We like our rational exponents in this video. So, because my driving force of the problem is 2, right, I'm going to show that 25 is 5 squared. Mm-hmm. I sure am. There you go. Enjoy that. Now, multiplying my exponents, we end up with 5 to the negative third power and b to the negative ninth power. Mm-hmm. We sure do. See, that 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. You're trying me again, aren't you? You're trying me again. Try me one more time, okay? Try me one more time. Let's see what happens. Continuing on. We will then get rid of our negative exponents. So we'll have 1 over 5 cubed, b to the ninth power, and the 5 to the third power, oh, you know it's 125, don't you? That's going to be 1 over 125, b to the ninth power. I'm putting a red box around this. After I fix this 9, that's ugly. Uh, no. All right, that's going to have to do. All right, that's b to the ninth power. Red box it. Red box in it. Yeah, 7f. Yep, here we go. Here we go. 8a. Yeah, 8a. Driving force. Yeah, it's 2. It's 2. All the exponents within these parentheses will be multiplied. This is a monomial. It's one term inside of those parentheses there. So all the exponents will be multiplied. Mm -hmm. I will rewrite this to show that that 9 is 3 squared just because it's going to make my simplification that much easier. All right. I like things a little easy when it comes to the math problems. All right. So here we have this. From here, let's multiply the exponents. So 2 times 1 half is just 1. So I'll have 3. This x is to the first power now because 2 times 1 half is 1. The y is going to be to the 1 sixth power because we multiplied 1 third times 1 half. In the denominator, I'll have x to the 1 sixth power. And then I'll have y to the 1 half power. All right? Because we'll be charged with simplifying this, right, we need to ensure that we subtract the exponents on our like basis. So what we'll do here is we'll say that this is 3x to the 6, 6, y to the 1, 6, divided by x to the 1, 6, y to the 3, 6. All right. So what I did here is I ensured that all of my variables had a common denominator with their exponents, and I found their equivalent fractions from there. The variable will remain wherever the largest exponent is, okay? So that means that my base x will remain in the numerator, and I subtract the exponents to get x to the 5, 6. That's that 6, 6 minus 1, 6 to give me 5, 6. The variable y, however, will stay in the denominator because that's where the largest exponent is. So the 3 minus the 1 gives me y to the 2, 6, which you can simplify and write it as y to the 1 third, right? All right, let's see if we can get this in here. Okay, so this is what we have. That's a 5 in that numerator over there. So you may or may not be able to write this as your final answer. Some textbooks will accept this as the final result. 
whereas other textbooks or your teacher may prefer you not to have a fractional exponent in the denominator. In that case, you'll need to rationalize it. So, so you would end up multiplying the numerator and the denominator by y to the two-thirds. All right, that's what you would do. And this is going to look a hot mess, but it'll get you the answer that you're looking for. All right. This is just going to be over y now because the one third plus the two thirds gives you three thirds, which is one. All right. So you can write your answer like this, my preference, or if you have to ensure that you don't have any rational exponents in your denominator, then you'll have it written in this form. And once again, I'm rationalizing the denominator to eliminate the rational exponents in the denominator. OK, so there you go. That's the result. For 8b, we have the quantity 2x to the 1 third power divided by y to the 2 thirds power, all being raised to the negative third power. We're going to distribute the negative exponent here. So I'll end up with 2 to the negative third power. This is x to the negative first power divided by y to the negative 2 power. That's after multiplying all the exponents times negative 3. Because we won't leave any negative exponents in our answer, all of the bases that have a negative exponent will be shifted to its opposite location in the fraction. In other words, all bases with a negative exponent in the numerator will be shifted to the denominator, and all bases with a negative exponent in the denominator will be shifted up to the numerator. All right, so I'll end up with y squared divided by 2 cubed x to the first power. But we know that 2 cubed is 8, right? So you'll end up with y squared divided by 8x, and this is our answer. I'm red boxing this. I am putting this in a red box. Done, son. That's 8b. Mm hmm. Moving on. We have 8c, and with 8c, we have this. I don't even want to say it out loud. It's just so much. But I know that my exponent on the outside is 15. I'm going to multiply 15 times every exponent within here, okay, within those parentheses. So I'll end up with x to the 5 goes into 15. 3 times 3 times 2 is 6. Mm -hmm. I have y. This gives me 5 goes into 15. 3 times 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And the denominator, I have 3 going into 15, 5 times 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. That's x to the negative fifth power. It sure is. I'm getting rid of my negative exponents now. Mm -hmm. Every base that has a negative exponent will be shifted to its opposite location in the fraction. Okay, So that means that this base of x in the denominator will come up. This base of y in the numerator is going to come down. All right. So we'll end up with x to the sixth power x to the fifth power, see shifting those bases will change the sign on the exponents. Yep. And because I'm multiplying like bases in the numerator here, I need to add those exponents. So we have x to the 11th power divided by y cubed, and this is the answer. Oh, you don't see it? Let me give you a better view. Here you have it. x to the 11th power divided by y cubed, red box in it. All right, this is going to be our final set of problems, and we'll be factoring, mm -hmm. factoring with rational exponents. How do you like that? You didn't expect that to be in this video, did you? <laughs> Surprised you. Mm -hmm. So here we have 4x to the 1 third times the quantity 2x plus 1 plus 2x to the 4 thirds power. Yeah, we're always going to start with the greatest common factor when factoring anything. And what we find is that out of the coefficients, we can factor out a 2. And with our variable x, we can factor out x to the 1 third power. All right. So this is our GCF for these two terms. Remember that terms are separated by plus or minus signs. And if you need a refresher over finding the GCF, check out that video right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I may be in it. Just saying. From here, 2 goes into 4 twice x to the one-third power goes into itself once, so that's that. But we do still have this 2x plus 1 out of that first term. All right? From here, 2 goes into 2 once. However, you should know factoring is associated with division. All right? So I'm dividing these like bases right here. So in other words, you'll need to subtract the exponents. So 4 minus the 1 gives me x to the three-thirds power. OK, from here, we'll be simplifying further and we'll have 2x to the one third 
times the quantity of 2 times 2x plus 1 plus x. All right, because 3 thirds is equivalent to 1, so x to the first power is just x. From here, we'll go ahead and get our arrows popping. That's right, the distributive property, my favorite property, and we get our arrows popping at FBT. So we'll have 2x to the 1 third power times 4x plus 2 plus x after distributing the 2. Mm -hmm. We're going to combine our like terms within the parentheses. We'll have 2x to the 1 third power times 5x plus 2, and this is your answer. Red box it. Oh, yeah. Red boxing it. Wonderful. Next up, we have n to the 2 thirds minus 4 into the 1 third minus 12. The form that this problem is in, it's a trinomial, is quadratic in nature. Mm -hmm. It's quadratic because the exponent on our first term is twice as much as the exponent in the second term on our variable n. So it's going to be quadratic in nature. You could actually use substitution on this if you wanted to. And if you want to refresh over a factor and use a substitution, check out this video. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just factor this. Yeah, I'm just going to go crazy. Knowing that I'll have n to the one third power as the first term in each set of parentheses here. I'll be looking at the I'll be looking at our value of 12, looking for two factors that'll multiply to give us 12 and subtract to give us 4. Yep, that'll be 6 and 2, right? So I'll have 6 and I'll have a 2. And since we always know that the largest factor is the sign of the middle term, the 6 must be negative, and because we're subtracting to get 4, the 2 must be positive, and this is our answer right here. It's over. That's it. See, if you were to multiply this back together, you'll get your original result right here. I'm red boxing this. I am red boxing this answer because it's right. That's it. It's done. It's over. Next problem. In problem 9C, all right, because we have a negative exponent here, they're ensuring that you know that x cannot equal to zero because that would make it undefined. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, we need to focus on factoring this. And when it comes to factoring the GCF on the exponents, you always factor out the lowest exponent on the variables. So in this case, it's going to be 4x to the negative 2 thirds power that will be factored out. So what remains after we factor out that GCF of 4x to the negative 2 thirds power? 4 goes into 8 twice, right? So you'll have uh, x to the first power now. Yeah. See, one third minus negative two thirds is the same as one third plus two thirds. Mm -hmm. And one third plus two thirds is three thirds. And three thirds is one. Okay. You need me to write that down, don't you? Okay. Uh, I said that my exponent one third minus negative two third gives me one third plus two thirds, which is three thirds. And three thirds equals one. All right. I mean, you got it from there, right? Okay, so that's how we end up with 2x as a result. Then 4x to the negative 2 thirds goes into negative 4x to the negative 2 thirds power negative 1 times. However, if you are to eliminate the negative exponent here, you'll end up with 4 times your quantity of 2x minus 1, all divided by x to the 2 thirds power. And this is your answer if, once again, your teacher or your text will accept a rational exponent in the denominator. So let's red box this. Or by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by x to the one third power, mm -hmm, you'll end up with this result. It'll be 4x to the one third times 2x minus 1 divided by x. And that's ensuring that your denominator does not have any rational exponents. So there you go. Oh, and by the way, that's x to the one third power if you can't make out that 3. I'll fix it. Okay, that should be a better three. Let's red box it. Red boxing it. Yeah, and that's the problem factored. Here's our last and final problem. We have 3x to the 4th, 7th power plus 2x to the 2 sevenths minus 8. I'm going to use substitution in this problem, all right? I'm going to say that y equals x to the 2 sevenths power. Therefore, y squared would equal x to the 4 sevenths power. Substituting, we can rewrite this as 3y squared plus 2y minus 8. Mm -hmm. 
And so I'll be factoring this using the same method that I showed you guys in factoring quadratic trinomials part two, part two. Okay, check out this link right here. So let's carry on then. If you multiply three times eight, you'll get 24. Looking at factors of 24, I have one times 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six, and I'm looking for two factors of 24 that'll subtract to give me two. That's four and six, all right? That being the case, I can set up two sets of parentheses now. I have the variable y, I'll have six, I'll have four. The sign of the middle term must be the sign of my largest factor, so six must be positive because I'm subtracting, the four has to be negative, and then we go back and we divide by our leading coefficient of three. Simplifying, you'll have y plus two times your denominator, that couldn't be reduced any further, goes in front of the variable, to give you three y minus four. Mm -hmm. And this is the factorization. However, y is not a part of our original problem now, is it? No, it's not. y is equivalent to x to the 2 7 power. So we're going to plug that in, and we'll end up with x to the 2 7 plus 2 times 3x to the 2 7 minus 4. And this is your factorization of 9D. And that was using the substitution method. Ladies and gentlemen, let's red box it. Red boxing it. That's 9D. So this concludes our video on the definitive guide to rational exponents. We covered everything. So please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate as that helps us bring you more free math tutorials from me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. Oh Lord, there's so many kind of fractions. They got proper, improper, addings, subtracting, Multiplying, dividing, mixed numbers, LCD. Ooh, that's like my TV. Simplifying, and my favorite of all, your least common denominator. <laughs> so, what do you say in a situation like this? You say it's no solution. Yeah, no solution, no sum can be found. It's the null set. It's not happening. It's an empty set. There is no sum for these two matrices, ladies and gentlemen. It's not happening.